Okay, good morning everyone. I want to make a comment before we start, and that is, uh, well, I'll ask you a question. Has everyone found their way? Does everyone here have all the answers? Do you know anybody that does have all the answers? Pardon? <laughs> well, we're turning it over to you. Then what do we do? A person might have as many revelations from the Lord Jesus Christ, be called and ordained to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ as it is revealed to him by Jesus Christ. Ministers for the Lord Jesus Christ are called to teach the truth. They are called to teach what comes through them from the Lord Jesus Christ, augmented by much, much, much study and prayer and struggling. But it is still the fact that it, the gospel of Jesus Christ must come from Jesus Christ, not from an individual. It has to come directly from Jesus Christ. It's a very serious matter. That's what we are here for. We must not pretend that we have all of the answers because we don't. Often we are simply confused as to how to conduct ourselves and what to believe. So that puts us in a position requiring great what? Humility. humility. Great humility. And prayer. It's vital that we pray. When it comes down to the end, the only source we have of real knowledge and truth and discernment of truth is through prayer, through Jesus Christ. So that brings us to this point. Um, if you have a mic handy uh, there, uh, I wonder, uh, Brother Heap, if you would mind offering the opening prayer. I'd be glad to do. Thank you. Father and when we come before thee at the close of this Sunday school class, we're truly thankful for Jim and for the time that he puts in uh, to, to teach us to uh, spread the word of the gospel. Thankful for the Book of Mormon, for the righteousness that it has, for the truth that it has within. Bless us all that we'll be able to spend time in it, reading, studying, pondering, and searching out the things that are, that are in it. We're thankful for everything that thou has given to us. We're thankful for this day that we're able to meet together. And we say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Today, after we review just a little bit, bring ourselves up to remember where we left off, we're going to start with about the 64th chapter of the fifth chapter of Helaman, which is the last chapter of Helaman. We'll probably finish that up easily and launch into the first chapter of Third Nephi. Uh, good morning. And what is being recorded here and presented here is impactful. It's momentous. Uh, it is so packed with information, you've got to look at it carefully because there's no value in, in reading this unless we absorb what God wants us to absorb and apply it the way God wants us to apply it. Unless it nourishes our intellects and our souls, uh, we have wasted our time. So to bring us up to where we left off, like I say, we're going to be starting with the 64th chapter of the fifth 64th verse of the fifth chapter of Helaman. Let's take, let's take a look at the nature of uh, nature of people and the nature of the situation that these people are in during the time of this writing and this reading. Turn to the fourth chapter if you want, or I'll turn to the fourth chapter, and I'll read the 49th through 56th verses. Yea, and we see at the very time when he doth prosper his people, God prospers his people, in the increase of their fields, their flocks, and their herds, and in gold, and in silver, and in all manner of precious things of every kind, 
and art, sparing their lives, delivering them out of the hands of their enemies, softening the hearts of their enemies, that they should not declare wars against them, and in fine, doing all things for the welfare and happiness of his people, yea, then is the time that they do harden their hearts and do forget the Lord their God and do trample under their feet the Holy One, yea, and this because of their ease and their exceeding great prosperity. And thus we see that except the Lord doth chasten his people with many afflictions, yea, except he doth visit them with death and terror and famine and with all manner of pestilences, they will not remember him. Oh, how foolish and how vain and how evil and devilish and how quick to do iniquity and how slow to do good are the children of men. Yea, how quick to hearken unto the words of the evil one and to set their hearts upon the vain things of the world. Yea, how quick to be lifted up in pride, how quick to boast and do all manner of that which is iniquity. And how slow are they to remember the Lord their God and to give ear unto his counsels. Yea, how slow to walk in wisdom's paths. Behold, they do not desire that the Lord their God, who hath created them, should rule and reign over them, notwithstanding his great goodness and his mercy towards them. They do not, they, I'm sorry, they do set at naught his counsels, and they will not that he should be their guide. Now, getting back into what we read last week, we'll flip to the sixth, chap sixth verse of the fifth chapter. We'll look at this and see how it was that Samuel the Lamanite came to have the revelations of God and the command to preach them to the people. Now, he's a Lamanite, and he's preaching unto the Nephites because the Nephites had, as we just read, because of their pride and their vanity and their bloodthirstiness and all kinds of temptations, they had flipped over to be the ones who were behaving and now culturally more evil than the Lamanites who had theretofore been the, you might say, more evil ones. And there had been warfare between them. So um, he said unto them, Behold, I, Samuel, a Lamanite, do speak the words of the Lord which he doth put into my heart. And behold, he hath put it into my heart to say unto this people that the sword of justice hangeth over this people, and 400 years passeth, passeth not away, save the sword of justice falleth upon this people. Looking at the seventh verse then that follows, we see a warning of looming national and cultural destruction Yea, heavy destruction awaiteth this people, and it surely cometh unto this people, and nothing can save this people, save it be repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall surely come into their world, and shall suffer many things, and shall be slain for his people. For this was written about six years B.C. And behold, an angel of the Lord hath declared it unto me, and he did bring glad tidings to my soul. And behold, I was sent unto you to declare it unto you also that you might have glad tidings, but you would not receive me. Look at the 17th verse in our review here. And we'll get a clue as to why many people will be spared destruction. There's much written about this, but we're just going to read one verse. But behold, if it were not for the righteous who were in this great city... Behold, I would cause that fire should come down out of heaven and destroy it. This is God speaking through Helaman. But behold, it is for the righteous sake that it is spared. Now, when people will be destroyed is explained in the next verse. But behold, the time cometh, saith the Lord, that when ye shall, what? Cast out the righteous from among you. Then shall ye be ripe for destruction. Clear prophecy, clear principle. You can look out for that. We'll look at the 35th through 39th verses. Behold, ye are worse than they, 
For as the Lord liveth, if a prophet come among ye and declareth unto you the word of the Lord, which testifieth of your sins and iniquities, you're angry with him and cast him out and seek all manner of ways to destroy him. Yea, you will say that he is a false prophet, that he is a sinner and of the devil, because he testifieth that your deeds are evil. But if a man shall come among you and shall say, do this, and there is no iniquity, do that, and ye shall not suffer, yea, he will say, walk after the pride of your own hearts, walk after the pride of your eyes, and do whatsoever your heart desireth. And if a man shall come among you and say this, you will receive him, and you will say that he is a prophet. Yea, ye will lift him up, you will give him of your substance, you will give unto him of your gold and of your silver, and you will clothe him with costly apparel. And because he speaketh flattering words unto you, and he saith that all is well, then you will not find fault with him. And he goes on to say, O ye wicked and perverse generation, ye hardened and stiff necked people, how long will you suppose that the Lord will suffer you? Yea, how long will you suffer yourselves to be led by foolish and blind guides? How long will you choose darkness rather than light? The nature of people, the nature of ourselves, it is just so vital that we each as individuals take a look at our own behaviors, our own beliefs, our own habits, our own what you might say culture, the trappings that keep us thinking what we think instead of expanding our paradigms, instead of destroying, deliberately destroying our own point of view and putting ourselves into God's point of view, continual prayer. It's a continual peril. It's so it is so necessary that we are in continual prayer individually. We will each stand alone at the day of judgment. We do have the great advantage and joy of each other's fellowship and support, however, which is a great joy to me. So, if we look at the 55th through 63rd chapters, which will take us just about where we are going to begin again, it tells us a little bit how Samuel was given vision and knowledge of Christ's birth. So it's important for us to look this over again. And behold, he said unto them, Behold, I give unto you a sign. For five years more cometh. In other words, in five years, and behold, then cometh the Son of God to redeem all those who shall believe on his name. And behold, this will I give unto you for a sign of its time of his coming. For behold, there shall be great lights in heaven. Lights. Insomuch that... In the night before he cometh, there shall be no darkness, insomuch that it shall appear unto man as if it was daytime. Therefore there shall be one day and a night and a day as if it were one whole day and there were no night. And this shall be unto you for a sign, for ye shall know of the rising of the sun and also of its setting, so it's light the full time. Therefore, they shall know of a surety that there shall be two days and a night. Nevertheless, the night shall not be darkened, and it shall be the night before he is born. And behold, there shall be a new star arise, such an one as we have never before beheld. And this also shall be a sign unto you. And behold, this is not all. There shall be many signs and wonders in heaven. And it shall come to pass that ye shall be all amazed and wonder insomuch that ye will fall to the earth. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall believe on the Son of God, the same shall have eternal everlasting life. And behold, thus hath the Lord commanded me by his angel that I should come and tell you this thing. Yea, he hath commanded that I should prophesy these things unto you Yea, he hath said unto me, Cry unto this people, Repent and prepare the way of the Lord. End of review. We're going to move on. Are there any comments or ideas? 
before we move on. Who would like to read the next segment? Do you have a volunteer? It's you read or you get your punishment by having to listen to me read. Rachel, I scared you into reading. I'm sorry. Read to us, teach us, be empowered by the Lord. Now anyone, if they are inspired to make a comment, raise your hand. We'll start with the 64th verse. And now it came to pass, I am a Lamanite, and hath spoken unto you the words which the Lord hath commanded me. And because it was hard against you, ye are angry with me, and do seek to destroy me, and have cast me out from among you. And ye shall hear my words, for for this intent I have come upon the walls of this city, that ye might hear and know of the judgments of God, which hath death await you because of your iniquities and also that ye might know the conditions of repentance, and also that ye might know of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, the creator of all things from the beginning, that ye might know of the signs of his coming, to the intent that, which, uh, intent that ye might believe on his name. And if ye believe on his name, ye will repent of all your sins, that thereby ye may have remission of them through his merits. And behold again, another sign I give unto you, yea, a sign of his death. For behold, sure, he surely must die that salvation may come. Yea, it behooveth him and becometh expedient that he dieth to bring past the resurrection of the dead, that thereby men may be brought into the presence of the Lord. Yea, behold, this death bringeth, bringeth to pass the resurrection and, redeem and redeemeth all mankind from the first death, that spiritual death. For all mankind, by the fall of Adam, being cut off from the presence of the Lord, are considered as death, both as to the things temporal and to the things spiritual. But behold, the resurrection of Christ redeemeth mankind, yea, even all mankind, and bringeth them back into the presence of the Lord, yea, and it bringeth to pass the conditions of repentance, that whosoever repenteth, the same is not hewn down and cast into the fire, but whosoever repenteth not is hewn down and cast into the fire. And there cometh upon them again a spiritual death, yea, a second death, for they are cut off again as to things pertaining to righteousness. Therefore, repent ye, repent ye, lest by knowing these things and not doing them, ye shall suffer yourselves to come under condemnation, and ye are brought down into the second death. But behold, as I said unto you concerning another sign, a sign of his death, behold in that day that he shall suffer death, the sun shall be darkened and refuse to give her light unto you, and also the moon and the stars, and there shall be no light upon the face of the land, even from the time that he shall suffer death, for the space of three days to the time that he shall rise again from the dead. Yea, at the time that he shall yield up the ghost, there shall be a thundering and lightning for the space of many hours. And the earth shall shake and tremble, and the rocks will, which are upon the face of the earth, which are both above the heaven and beneath, which ye know at, the same, at this time is solid, or the more part is of it is one solid mass shall be broken up. Yea, they shall be rent in twain and shall ever after be found in seams and in cracks. And Rachel, in may I interrupt for just a second? Um, you interposed a, a word there. You used heaven when it was earth. Would you read that? Would you read okay. that again, please? Um, verse 77, yeah. yes. And the that. earth shall shake and tremble and the rocks which are upon the face of the earth which are both above the earth and beneath, which we, which ye know at this time is solid, or the more part of it is one solid mass shall be broken up. Yea, they shall be rent in twain and shall ever after be found in seams and in cracks and in broken fragments upon the face of the whole earth. Yea, 
both above the earth and both beneath. Can we, can we stop and discuss this here? That's interesting. I, that went right over my head when I read this. The, um, they shall be rent in twain and shall ever after be found in seams and cracks and in broken fragments upon the face of the whole earth, yea, both above the earth and beneath. Who knows, ab who knows about this? Who has seen those evidences? Rachel. Earthquakes, they happen on a regular basis now. And, and we find remnants of previous civilizations in, in the earth. Yep. Okay. It's that simple? Okay. Well, how about, would you read through, go ahead and read through the 83rd verse, please. Mm -hmm. And behold, there shall be great tempests, and there shall be many mountains laid below, like unto a valley, and there shall be many places which are now called valleys which shall become mountains and those height thereof is great and the many and many highways shall be broken up and many sh cities shall be uh, desolate and many graves shall be opened and shall yield up many of their dead and many saints shall appear unto many and behold thus hath the angel spoken unto me for he said unto me that there should be thundering and lightning for the space of many hours and he said unto me that while the thunder and the lightning lasted and the tempest that these things should be and that darkness should cover the face of the whole earth for the space of three days and the angel said unto me that many shall see great things greater things than these to the intent that they might believe that these signs and these wonders should come to pass upon all the face of the land, to the intent that there should be no cause for unbelief among the children of men. Amazing. No cause for unbelief among the children of men. But there will still be great unbelief among the children of men without cause. Well, hey, let, I'd like to ask you a question. Go back to the 66th verse. And tell me what the, who Jesus is as described in the 66th verse. I, how about just reading that one verse again, please. And also that ye might know of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, the creator of all things from the beginning, and that ye might know of the signs of his coming to the intent that ye might believe on his names, his name. That is Jesus Christ, the everlasting, unchangeable, son of the creator, co-creator, also called God himself, incarnate, who cannot change and whose gospel cannot change. He was in the beginning. He was in the beginning. The gospel was in beginning. God. He cannot change, the gospel cannot change, and it is that gospel that is unchangeable that we seek after, and we have a good chance of finding, believe it or, or not. Okay, now, when we start with the uh, 84th verse, there's gonna be two verse, three verses there, the 84th through 86th, and they describe our own personal responsibilities and a little bit about the resulting judgment that happens because of the way we have managed our responsibilities. Who would like to read those three verses, the 84th through 86th? Lyle, please. Can you hear me? Okay. And this to the intent that so whoever will believe might be saved, and that whosoever will not believe, a righteous judgment might come upon them. And also, if they are condemned, they bring upon themselves their own condemnation. And now remember, remember, my brethren, that whosoever perisheth, perisheth unto himself, and so whosoever doeth iniquity, doeth it un unto himself. For behold, ye are free, ye are permitted to act for yourselves. For behold, God hath given unto you a knowledge 
and he hath and he hath made you free he hath given unto you that ye might know good from evil and he hath given unto you that ye might choose life or death and ye can do good and be restored unto that which is good or have that which is good restored unto you or ye can do evil and have that which is evil restored unto you thank you what do you think what are your comments on that pretty solemn huh is there any way we can get around that right well who would like to read on here beginning with the 87th verse Looks like you got the mic there, Lyle. Okay. Hey, how about, uh, let's see, 87th through 95th? Will that work for you? 95th? Sure. Okay. And now, my beloved brethren, behold, I declare unto you that except you shall repent, your houses shall be left unto you desolate. Yea, except ye repent, your women shall have great cause to mourn in the day that they shall give suck, and ye shall attempt to flee, and there shall no place for refuge, and shall no place for refuge. Yea, and woe unto them which are with child, for they shall be heavy and cannot flee. Therefore ye shall be trodden down and shall be left to perish. Yea, woe unto this people which are called the people of Nephi except they shall repent where they, while they shall, when they shall see all those signs and wonders which shall be shown unto them. And behold, they have been a chosen people of God, of the Lord, and also hath he chastened them, yea, in the days of their iniquity hath he chastened them because he loveth them. But behold, my brethren, the Lamanites, hath he hated because their deeds have been evil continually, and this because of the iniquity of the traditions of their fathers. Yet, but behold, salvation hath come unto them through the preaching of the Laman, a Nephites, and for this intent hath the Lord prolonged their days. And ye would that I, ye should behold that the more part of them are in the path of their duty, and they do walk circumspectly before God and they do observe to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments according to the law of Moses yea I say unto you that the more part of them are doing this and they will strive with unweary diligence that they may bring the remainder of their brethren to the knowledge of the truth Therefore, are they, there are many which do add to their numbers daily. And behold, ye do know of yourselves, for ye have witnessed it, that as many of them as are brought to the knowledge of the truth, and to know of the wicked and abominable traditions of their fathers, and are led to believe the Holy Scriptures. Well, all right. Any comments at this juncture? If not, let's take a look at the next three, two verses, uh, 96 through 97 verses, which gives us a solemn reminder of the importance of Scripture. Would you like to read two more? Yea, the prophecies of the holy prophets which are written, which leadeth them to faith on the Lord and unto repentance which faith and repentance bringeth a change of heart unto them. Therefore, as many as have come to this, ye know of yourselves, are firm and steadfast in the faith and in the things wherein they have been made free. Okay. Who would like to read from here? Bill? How about um, the... 98th through the 102nd verses. 98 through 102. And ye, know, and ye know also that they have buried their weapons 
of war, and they feared to take them up, lest by any means they should sin. Yea, ye can see that they fear to sin. For behold, they will suffer themselves, that they be trodden down and slain by their enemies, and will not lift up their swords against them, and this because of their faith in Christ. And now because of their steadfastness, when they do believe, then in that, <coughs> in that thing which they do believe, for because of their firmness when they are once enlightened, behold, the Lord shall bless them and prolong their days, notwithstanding their iniquity. Yea, even if they should dwindle in unbelief, the Lord shall pro prolong their days until the time shall come which hath been spoken of by our fathers, and also by the prophet Zenos and many other prophets concerning the restoration of our brethren, the Lamanites, again to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, I say unto you that in the latter times the promises of the Lord hath been extended to our brethren, the Lamanites, not and notwithstanding the many afflictions which they shall have, and notwithstanding they shall be driven to and fro upon the face of the earth, and be hunted, and shall be smitten and scattered abroad, having no place for refuge, the Lord shall be merciful unto them. Go ahead and read the 104th now, please. And this is according to the prophecy, that they shall again be brought to the true knowledge, which is the knowledge of their Redeemer, and their great and true shepherd, and be numbered among his sheep. Now, is this an event that took place in North American history, in our own history books? What? Bill? Yeah, they, the, you know, the, Many of them vowed never to pick up a weapon, and they allowed themselves to be slain. And many more of the Lamanites, though, were um, saved, really, by this action that they took upon them uh, righteousness. Now, I'm, earlier on here, Samuel Lamanite was, okay, I'll, I'll stop and lie on it. It says here in 102 that in the latter times the promises of the Lord have been extended. And then it goes on and says that they shall be driven to and fro upon the face of the earth and be hunted and shall be smitten and scattered abroad, having no place for refuge. Look what happened in the latter days yeah. in the 1800s when um, the, the um, Europeans settled the nation. They put the Native Americans, the Lamanites, that we know them as the Lamanites, they put them into bondage, they moved them around. There was that trail of tears, the, all of the horrible things that happened to those people. Yeah. But it goes back that this is a promise that they made because they turned away from Jesus Christ. And now they have a chance to be redeemed. That is a happy note. It is. It is a sad note that they were scattered and smitten and their lands taken away, forced onto reservations, endured broken treaty after broken treaty, desolation, decimation of their population. It was horrible, but when you read the Book of Mormon and you read this passage in the Book of Mormon, it was a prophecy of what the Lord did because they turned their hearts away from him. Yeah. And they still lived in the traditions of their fathers. This is not an isolated incident in the history of the world. No. And in the history of God's dealing with people of the world, it is typical. Correct. Uh, it's horrible, it's terrifying to consider, but it was explained in just some of what we read today that People will not listen to the Lord unless they have to suffer, suffer these horrible things. Well, it's, it's a continual principle all through the scriptures. Yeah. So do you think there's any chance that we will be spared and those kind of things won't happen among us, among our nation? I don't know. You don't think that's kind of a rhetorical question, but you got a, you, you're, you got a comment, Bill. Well, the Lord said as long as we keep his commandments, this land would be preserved. But if we turn away from him, 
they'll give it to someone else. And you know, it's, uh, I think it was Nikita Khrushchev once said that the only way to defeat America was from within. And it, we can certainly see that from within, things are going extremely bad. Extremely bad, extreme, so extremely it, bad. You know, it's, it's gonna be according to prophecy. We're gonna have to suffer the good. It rains on the good and the bad equally. It, uh, the Lord is no respecter of persons. But he does give to his people opportunities that are good for them. You know, we may not have everything we want, but the Lord gives us everything we need. Yes, thank you. Who would like to read from here? I believe we uh, read through the 106th verse. No, we read through the 104th. Who would like to pick up with the 105th verse? Bill, you tired yet? Therefore, if I say unto you, it should be better for them that the, than for you, except ye repent. For behold, had the mighty works had been shown unto them which have been shown unto you, yea, unto them who have dwindled in unbelief because of the traditions of their fathers, ye can see of yourselves that they never would again have dwindled in unbelief. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will not utterly destroy them, but I will cause that in the day of my wisdom they shall return again unto me, saith the Lord. And now behold, saith the Lord, concerning the people of the Nephites, if they will not repent and observe to do my will, I will utterly destroy them, saith the Lord, because of their unbelief, notwithstanding the many mighty works which I have done among them. And as surely as the Lord liveth, Shall these things be, saith the Lord. And now it came to pass that there were many who heard the words of Samuel the Lamanite, which he spake upon the walls of the city. And as many as believed on his words went forth and sought for Nephi. And when they had come forth and found him, they confessed unto him their sins and denied not, desiring that they may be baptized unto the Lord. Let's stop there a second. That's significant tells us a little bit. It tells us a little bit about the story and where we are in the story. As many as believed on his words went forth and sought for Nephi. And when they had come forth and found him, they confessed unto him their sins and denied not, desiring that they might be baptized unto the Lord. So there were some, a very few, I think a small few, who processed the message in a honest way, a righteous way, recognized the truth of Samuel and William Wright's words, changed their lives. <laughs> if one person changes his life when he hears the gospel, that's a, such a momentous thing. And here's quite a handful of them did. So, okay, that's where we are right there. Okay. Yes. Yes, Lyle. It's interesting to me um, that in here that it was Samuel the Lamanite which taught them, but then they went forth and sought Nephi to have him uh, hear their confessions and then to baptize them. Now why do you think that they went to Nephi and they didn't go to Samuel the Lamanite? Good question. Need somebody else's answer other than my mine. philosophy, yes. my idea is that Samuel the Lamanite didn't hold the Melchizedek priesthood or even the Aaronic priesthood. He didn't have the authority, but he had the authority to preach because he was called of God to preach. Okay. That's my theory. So, like in Clue, prove me wrong. <laughs> well, it doesn't have, it doesn't say a word in there about his uh, priesthood. It doesn't. It said that God, now that's so interesting that you would say that nevertheless he was called to preach. God had something for him to do and he did what he was he did it he boldly one man alone against the whole culture that he was raised in one man saw that he was going to do what God told him to do 
That's tough. That's tough for any of us. I admire anyone that will do what they're told to do. Bill. Well, according to your question there, why would they go to uh, Nephi? It's, you know, when we are presented with the truth and we recognize it because the Holy Spirit will testify of the truth, they wanted to go to someone that they knew was a prophet of God. And, you know, the proof's in the pudding, so Nephi had been around a long time, whereas Samuel the Lamanite is, is new on the scene. Even though, you know, the truth is the truth no matter who speaks it. I mean, that's just a fact of life. And sometimes men love darkness rather than light. But when we accept the light, there is always joy. And uh, Nephi was, you know, part of them. So that's, you know, you want to go to someone familiar. We even do that now. If we need administration, for example, well, uh, we know that elder so-and-so is, uh, his track record's pretty good on this kind of stuff. Let's go to him rather than someone that is right there right now. Sure. Well, hey, I'm going to read the, uh, the next few verses here uh, on what in 111. Um, it tells us about the nature of those who reject the gospel. Uh, there were many who did not believe in the words of Samuel. They rejected the gospel. They were angry with him. They cast stones at him upon the wall. And also many shot arrows at him as he stood upon the wall. That's the nature of people who reject the gospel. The, uh, in the 114th, we'll read, we'll read down through the 114th verse. But this, the spirit of the Lord was with him, Samuel the Lamanite, and so much that he, they could not hit him with their stones, neither with their arrows. Now when they saw that he could not hit him, they could not hit him, there were many more who did believe on his words, in so much that they went away unto Nephi to be baptized. For behold, Nephi was baptizing, here's what I wanted to pull out of this one, the kind of things that were happening uh, with Nephi and those who were dedicated to the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. Nephi was baptizing and prophesying and preaching. He was crying repentance unto the people, showing signs and wonders, working miracles among the people that they might know that Christ must shortly come to pass, telling them of things which must shortly come that they might know and remember at the time of their coming that they had been made known unto them beforehand to the intent that they might believe. I just love that. I wish that could, maybe it is happening to us. We've been shown, we've been told signs that we will see, events that will occur on the earth. We might be enduring those right now. I need to wake up to it. Well, all right. As many as believed on the words of Samuel went forth unto him to be baptized, for they came repenting and confessing of their sins but the more part of them did not believe in the words of Samuel. Therefore, when they saw that they could not hit him with their stones and their arrows, they cried out unto their captain, saying, Take this fellow and bind him, for behold, he hath a devil. And because the power of the devil which is in him, we can't hit him with our stones and our arrows. Therefore, take him and bind him and away with him. And as they went forth to lay their hands on him, behold, he did cast himself down from the wall and did flee out of their lands, yea, even to his own country, and began to preach and prophesy among his own people. Who were his own people? Who was Samuel the Lamanite? Yeah, okay. Who would like to pick up from there? Four? Uh, Sister Nunn? Okay. Uh, anyone? If not, I will. Are you willing to be punished? Bill. Seven, nine, That's flattering. I will read. And behold, there was never heard of more among the, he was never heard of more among the Nephites. And thus were the affairs of the people. 
And thus ended the 80 and 6th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended also the 80 and 7th year of the reign of the judges. The more wicked, the more part of the people remaining in their pride and wickedness, and the lesser part walking more circumspectly before God. So the lesser part walked circumspectly before God, but there was a segment of the population that did. And these were the conditions also in the 80 and 8th year of the reign of the judges. And there was but little alteration in the affairs of the people, save it were the people began to be more hardened in iniquity and do more and more of that which was con contrary to the commandments of God in the 80 and 9th year of the reign of the judges. But it came to pass in the 90th year of the reign of the judges, there were great signs given unto the people and wonders and the words of the prophets began to be fulfilled. And angels did appear unto men, wise men, and did declare unto them glad tidings of great joy. Thus in this year, the scriptures began to be fulfilled. Nevertheless, the people began to harden their hearts, all save it were the most believing part of them, both of the Nephites and also of the Lamanites and began to depend upon their own strength and upon their own wisdom, saying, now listen to see if this is the kind of thing that we have to endure hearing today. They began to depend upon their own strength and upon their own wisdom, saying this, well, some things they may have guessed right among so many, but behold, we know that all these great and marvelous works cannot come to pass of which have been spoken. And they began to reason and to condemn among themselves, saying that it's not reasonable that such a being as a Christ shall come. And if so, and he be the Son of God, the Father of heaven and of earth, as has been spoken, why will he not show himself unto us as well as unto them who shall be at Jerusalem? Yea, why will he not show himself in this land as well as in the land of Jerusalem? But behold, we know that this is a wicked tradition which has been handed down to us by our fathers to cause us that we should believe in some great and marvelous thing which would come to pass, but not among us, but in a land which is far distant, a land which we know not. Therefore, they can keep us in ignorance, for we cannot witness with our own eyes that they are true. And they will, by the cunning and mysterious arts of the evil one, work some great mystery, which we cannot understand, which will keep us down to be servants to their words and also servants unto them, for we depend upon them to teach us the word. And thus will they keep us in ignorance if we will yield ourselves unto them all the days of our lives. And many more things did the people imagine up in their hearts, which were foolish and vain. And they were much disturbed for Satan did stir them up to do iniquity continually. Yea, he did go about spreading rumors and contentions upon all the face of the land that he might harden the hearts of the people against that which was good and against that which should come. And notwithstanding the signs and the wonders which were wrought among the people of the Lord and the many miracles which they did, Satan did get great hold upon the hearts of the people upon all the face of the land and thus ended the 90th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And thus ended the book of Helaman, and this was according to the record of Helaman and his sons. And it is late. We ended with the end of the fifth chapter of Helaman. Next week, we'll embark on the first chapter of third Nephi.